All right, everybody. Thank you. And thank you, C6, for inviting me this morning. Uh, I am happy to do this recording. And uh, today we are here for Networking 101, how to land opportunities and also with AI. It's good to be back. Uh, and I appreciate you having the chance for me to record this, uh, given some conflicts. So uh, a little bit about me before we begin. Uh, my name is uh, Albert. Uh, I'm a product marketer by day and uh, a job search guy, founder of Albert's List uh, by night. Um, we're a community with 50,000 members located in the Bay Area and beyond. Uh, members have found work at companies like Google, Cisco, GoPro, and Twitter. And what we mainly do is uh, job search and entrepreneurship-based boot camps where we help people find their career aha moments. Uh, my LinkedIn is linked here as well, and feel free to connect with me. Uh, let me know you found me through this recording and through the C6 program, and that'll be great. Um, Albert's List, uh, this is just a little bit about us. You can find the link there, uh, and you can join our community and engage with our members uh, and do everything from introductions to job postings uh, to looking at some of the videos and events that we have as well. Uh, so the agenda for today, uh, I wanted to just uh, go through this real quick. Uh, we're going to talk about the job market as it relates to networking, the principles of good networking, applying networking into your job search, and then share some closing thoughts. And so first, we're going to start about the state of the job market as it relates to networking. You know, one of the important things that I think is to understand how we got here, because how we got here is... Uh, incredibly important as it relates to uh, is incredibly important as it relates to uh, why we have to tell the story in the way that we do, uh, right? Obviously, the market is not in a good place right now, but there's a lot of context behind that. So we need to uh, really look at that and its level of importance. And so the first thing that we want to know and that, you know, has really been at the forefront is that uh, since the beginning of January 2020, we've seen a huge spike in tech sector jobs. And over the last couple of months, especially notably in 2024, we've seen a giving back of many of those jobs. So if you feel like your tech career has stalled and things seem slower, it is not you. It is literally the market. Uh, as you can see, Things like web search portals, libraries and related, streaming services, social networking jobs, the jobs that are very key and crucial to the Bay Area economy uh, have been declining. And so you see that average falling below, while areas such as AI and cloud continue to be OK, uh, the overall equilibrium has just completely stalled out. And so uh, we continue to see that being a struggle for our region. Uh, the unemployment rate has also started to rise. This is, uh, as we know from the July report, we're now at 4.3%, uh, which is a uh, which has been the highest that it's been since really the last days of the pandemic in 2021. Uh, the SOM rule, as you may have heard, has been activated. And so um, that states that if the unemployment rate rises by more than half a percent, over a, over a year long period that a recession is imminent. Who knows whether that is uh, going to be the case this time. Uh, recessions are always uh, uncertain, uh, but given where we have been uh, with, uh, with rising interest rates and so forth, uh, it is, uh, it is uh, yet to be seen, but you know, uh, we, we always want to be vigilant about that. Uh, job openings are also trending down. So we see less job openings than ever. As we know, uh, high inflation leads to a rise in interest rates, which makes capital more expensive to acquire. And as a result of that, uh, with capital more expensive to acquire, it is also more expensive and less plausible that employees are needed. And so more than ever, for those who are in the job market and looking for tech jobs in particular right now, it is harder to find work. And so therefore, uh, when it comes to job hunting, your margin for error is smaller than ever. You have to be detailed in your applications. You have to uh, master your interview process. And you have to be able to find ways to 
uh, land and be considered for opportunities without being uh, without uh, without uh, being sent into the black hole of the applicant tracking system. And that's uh, and that's sort of what the whole concept of networking comes about today is because people hire people. People don't hire resumes. They don't hire job applications. They hire real people. And the more that you can get to somebody who is real and somebody whom you can relate to and have that conversation, the better it is. And so, you know, economic uncertainty is really the soup du jour for today. Uh, you have a combination of AI, high interest rates in an election year, making hiring uncertain. Fewer jobs means that, again, there are more applications per job. And with technology systems being swamped, not everyone gets seen. Sometimes you get auto-rejected. And uh, sometimes these hiring managers are even too overwhelmed to look in the first place. And so you need to reduce your margin for error and increase your chances of being seen. And so the principles of good networking are going to help you do that. And so in this section, we're going to go through uh, a couple of these uh, a couple of these slides to talk about what makes good networking and what makes your networking more effective than the next person. And so uh, we're going to talk about some of these principles and go through which of these are one by one. So principle number one is that focus matters. You want to go where you have value and where you can be the most focused in your entire uh, in your entire networking uh, journey. So going to general networking events, going to uh, business mixers is a good start, but it may not necessarily be the best for you because it doesn't help you fulfill your goals. So if you're a marketing person, you probably want to be at American Marketing Association events. If you are a product market manager, you want to be at Silicon Valley Product Management Association. If you're a software engineer or software developer at any level, you probably want to be at user groups because all of those have very specific uh, personas whom you can meet. And with those personas, it'll help you get to the next stage of you know potential hiring managers, potential colleagues, and so forth. And so... Uh, it is okay to go to those business networking events, those general ones, but the more focused you become, I would also say the more satisfying your conversations are because you're talking to people who speak your language as opposed to people who are more generalists. The second principle of networking is to be interested. So networking events by design are awkward because you're throwing a bunch of random people into a room in hopes that connections will be happening. People obviously love to talk more than they talk talk more than they listen. And so being interested is sort of the psychological thing where if you ask questions and you show interest and you show that you're taking the time to invest within who they are, then you're going to get back a lot more interest from them on your side. So learn to learn to really pick up the cues. When people are speaking, ask for what it is that uh, they may want to know more about. Uh, ask for you know their their thoughts on certain opinions. Ask them to talk about their career because it will ask them to actually ask you to talk about yourself too. And that in turn is a circle that is really, really beneficial for both sides of the networking conversation. Principle number three is to know your goals. So this is really actually in tune, in tune with principle one, uh, but also expands upon it. If you are focused and you know your end goals, then you, number one, know how to introduce yourself. Your elevator pitch is incredibly crucial, and making a first impression happens within the first 30 to 45 seconds of knowing someone. If you're stumbling through that elevator pitch, then it's incredibly difficult to get towards the end. Uh, and so, yeah, figure out in 30 to 45 seconds what your name is, what you work on, or what your career area is, and what your goals are, and or how people can help you. You also want to know why you're showing up to a particular event. If you're going to a Silicon Valley Product Management Association event, you're there to learn, you're there to meet new people, or you're there to look for a new job because... Uh, that's what it is. And those associations expect people like that to show up. Uh, but only if you articulate it, are you able to really show 
that you understand it. And then finally, do you know what you want, right? Think about your focus. If it is that job that you're looking for, you wanna be specific. I'm looking for a, a job as a product manager at a Fortune 500 company. I'd like to be a software developer in the blockchain space for a startup that is series A or later. Or I'm looking for an early stage opportunity where I can be a leader uh, and I can take a company from zero to one. And so the more specific you are about those, the more that other people can help you, and the more that you know that your events that you're going to attend are going to cater to, to that. And so uh, those are all things that come into focus and knowing your goals. Number four is having a call to action, right? So when you go to an event, when you network with people, um, chatting is fantastic, but ultimately you have to get down to brass tacks. People don't go to networking events without the intention of at least looking for something, whether it's a new customer, whether it's a contact, whether it's uh, whether it's uh, interesting people and so forth. And so if you're spending all this money, this time on getting dressed, driving around the Bay Area and beyond and uh, networking, but not following up, then you're really just wasting your time. Let's fully be honest about that. Um, you're not doing your networking for a hobby or for, for purpose for a career, but rather for a hobby. So with that in mind, uh, you have to understand what comes next when it comes to uh, doing your networking activities whether it's getting somebody's email, setting up a phone call, discussing an opportunity, uh, sharing content even. So if you see an article that someone whom you networked with is uh, somebody that uh, you can uh, find some additional relatability with, all of that is going to be very important because it brings in that opportunity to share that value and, um, and be somebody of interest and so forth. And so you know, find a way to take that to the next conversation. Make sure that you have a next opportunity lined up so that you are not wasting your time, you're not wasting their time, and there's that mutual benefit being, uh, being incurred. Principle number five is being a good listener, right? Most, uh, most people do go to networking events. A lot of people that you meet are not a good fit, but some are. Uh, but it's important to listen to people what you're saying to what people are saying when you speak. Uh, on one hand, right, you want to uh, see whether it is something that you can help them with, but you also want to show that you're paying attention. So if you can offer people help, take that route. If you cannot offer help, be gracious about that conversation. The Bay Area, you know, for all of its uh, regional size of 10 million people or bigger, is actually a very small place. So reputations do travel. So I encourage you to be a good active listener, be somebody who's actively listening to what somebody else is saying and you know tactics like repeating back what you heard or asking follow-up questions uh, that, uh, that show that you are being interested are all good ways to show that you are listening to what is going on in that conversation. Number six, the sixth principle is that relatability helps, right? People hire those that they know, like, and trust. And so they wanna know people that uh, they are working, that they're going to network with and maybe potentially even work with are folks that they can relate to. And so if you can find those areas of what we call affinity, uh, it's always a good place to begin. So affinity is common people that you know, alumni networking, company alumni, people that you've worked with in the past. And it's always, always a conversation starter, right? So I know that I went to Santa Clara University myself. It's been 15 years since I stepped on campus as a student, but if I meet a fellow alumnus, I know that it is a point of uh, relatability because we can talk about a common university experience. Another area you can talk about is being on Albert's list, right? Or being in C6. These are all areas where these are affinity networks and these affinity networks are huge and an opportunity for all of us to meet additional people elsewhere. Then finally, number seven, this is going with the call to action, is following up. You're gonna waste your time if you go to networking events and you don't have follow-up emails. I know a lot of us collect business cards, but it's always important to act upon them. Take those business cards, pick up the phone, write an email, and get to the next step. 
then apply your other principles and be clear with your communication, right? So you're looking for a job, you're looking to network, you're looking to connect, you're looking for a business opportunity. If that's what you're looking for, be clear about it. Don't beat around the bush. Don't talk about how you have a great opportunity that people are going to engage in and enjoy. You want to talk about what it is that you want. Be clear about it so people can know whether you are somebody that they want to work with or don't want to work with. It's easier to get to the end faster than fussing your way around everything and waiting uh, until you have to be really, really clear about it to get to the end. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is applying networking into your job search. So uh, with these principles in mind, let's talk about how you can make this a part of your strategy as you look to get past the applicant tracking system and look past and getting this competitive market here. And so the first thing is to choose how you network. Right? There are a lot of different modalities today, uh, given the influx of technology, the democratization of platforms, and the ability to easily spin up something that will allow you to get in front of people quickly. Uh, number one is in-person networking, which is tried and true. We've all come to know and love that over the years. Uh, number two is actually a little bit uh, different in that you can be online, right? So LinkedIn groups, Facebook groups, email introductions, alumni associations, uh, groups such as this, C6, where you can network right in the chat here and in the various uh, uh, various modalities that Ian and uh, and Hamad Hamad create, so that you can uh, Hamid create, so that you can uh, speak to each other and share what it is that you're looking for. And then the third one is really just serendipitous, right? So if you're in the supermarket checkout line and you overhear a conversation that could be interesting, or if you're on an airplane or on the bus and you hear two people talking about a topic that interests you, um, interrupting politely or inserting yourself where it's uh, polite to do so is another way to find yourself within those conversations. And so uh, there's a lot of ways to meet people. It's not just uh, structured, and but there's also unstructured ways and if you are uh, if you are bold enough to have those unstructured conversations, it can be a great boon to you. So in-person networking 101, right? We've all gotten to know this over the last couple of years. In the Bay Area in particular, you want to dress for business casual. Although it may depend, you may find yourself in a more formal situation where a suit and tie is necessary. Uh, it's important to read the room. Uh, any situation can also be a networking event, right? So um, you might meet a recruiter at a networking event and it does behoove you to be professional. It behooves you to answer your questions in a clear manner. You might even meet a, meet a recruiter or a hiring manager uh, at a restaurant. This happens a lot. And so you still need to know how to read the room, uh, business etiquette matters, food etiquette matters, things like that. Uh, be on time. You never know who you'll meet or miss. Be on your A game. Have that good focus. Have that good mindset. Uh, don't uh, don't come frazzled. Um, know that if you're at a networking event and maybe something big comes up or something that shocks you comes up, that you know it takes a little bit of time on the side so that you can compose yourself. Have that goal. Know what it is that you want. So go to networking events that make sense to you. And then of course, watch your food and drink intake. Uh, food and drink is there to complement. It is not through there to actually satiate you completely. Um, that's why they call them refreshments and they don't call them a meal. Um, finding a way to network, right? So Eventbrite's got a lot of really great events. Meetup, LinkedIn, Facebook. Uh, Luma is a platform that has emerged in the past couple of years as well. And so I invite you to take a look at those platforms and really, uh, really get clear with them and you know, use these platforms to search for events that matter for you, whether it's digitally, whether it's in person, um, and, uh, and, uh, and use those to your advantage. You can also use AI to network. So this is something that's been coming up uh, in a lot of these presentations over the last couple of years is whether you can use AI to network and you absolutely can. Uh, you can use AI to uh, you can use AI to uh, brainstorm as you see in this example here. So what you would do is you can open ChatGPT, uh, and ideally this is the latest version, which is 4.0. But if you have an older free version of ChatGPT 3.5, uh, you'll have to also note the accuracy of it. And so you want to refine until you get the answers that you want. And so what you can see in the right-hand example here is the prompt is, pretend I am a product manager in Silicon Valley. What are some networking or professional events, the associations that I can attend? 
And so, um, and so ChatGPT here gives you 12 different examples. And so it's up to you to research each of these examples to make sure that they're an actual fit and make sure that they're in your budget range and so forth. And so you can always substitute product manager for your own job and Silicon Valley for your own region, and then go from there to find out what it is exactly that will, that can help you. And so, uh, yeah, give this a shot with your own, with your own AI platform and, uh, and, and, and see what comes up. Online networking 101 is another thing that you can do. There's a lot of different avenues here. Uh, which include virtual events and messaging others, uh, you can reach a much wider audience this way too. I know that with a lot of Albert's List webinars, for example, we get people from around the world, uh, including Australia, Asia, uh, Western Europe, uh, the East Coast, uh, South America. And so uh, you'll need to, you'll still need to be focused here. And focusing is a little tougher, but overcoming it will help you also pay great dividends. And so virtual event networking, you follow the lead of the webinar of the event host. You can share your LinkedIn profile uh, or, what, or whatever the host asks for. When connecting with others, offer context of where you found them. I get a lot of empty LinkedIn introduction requests. And so it's important for me to know where people are coming from so that I can give them the best uh, networking possible. And then once again, attend events that are relevant to your background. Uh, there are a lot of general networking events online too that are great, uh, but you definitely want to meet people in a very context-driven space. So make sure that you meet them in the space that best serves you. Other ways of virtually networking include networking on LinkedIn, right? So 50 million people use LinkedIn to job hunt weekly. And LinkedIn is a platform that'll hit a billion people by 2025 with six people hired every single minute. Opportunities to network exist in groups, posts and affinity connections. And so there's several ways where you can meet new people there. And it's always um, always a good opportunity to meet people there as well. You wanna network on LinkedIn because you know obviously you wanna get a job, you wanna conduct informational interviews, get referred and connect with others and be that super connector. Uh, and so uh, some people have used that super connector designation over the years as LinkedIn open networkers. I, I would watch those with very key, with we can be very careful. But what I would do instead is I would focus on your affinity connections. And here's how you do that. And we'll show that on the next slide. Uh, that's by focusing down on who you want to network with, right? So you want to look for opportunities to be introduced. You want to focus on commonalities, including mutual connections, your alumni, company, which are, can be company or educational. And so what you do is you go to your all filter section that you can see here, and you filter people by connections through location, current company, um, the school they went to, first, second, third degree, uh, or previous companies that they were at. And so by that, you can see these people who are second degree connections or first degree connections and ask for that referral. You wanna make that LinkedIn introduction. You, in mail helps, but otherwise you're limited on characters. Uh, what you want to do is uh, uh, send something that at least is semi-memorable and straightforward and then have that ask ready. Uh, unfortunately, you cannot include your contact info, so hopefully you can be focused in your ask. Uh, and so you can use AI to network in this sense, right? So again, ChatGPT or Claude can help in this case. Claude is spelled C-A-L-U-D-E. Uh, and as you can see in the prompt here, I'm asking this, I'm saying, act as if I'm a job seeker looking for a job. I'm applied to a product marketing manager role at eBay. Craft an introductory message to the recruiter to help you stand out. And so if you're using InMail, this is going to work. You can also say, um, draft an introductory message in less than 200 characters for the recruiter to help me out. And that'll help you filter down by what you see uh, within the LinkedIn, uh, within the LinkedIn realm of thing, within the LinkedIn uh, realm where you can add people, and so refine your messages. Make sure that the messages align with what you're looking for, and hopefully that can that can help you out here. Uh, with AI uh, networking, you can also uh, network with others too. And so, as you can see here, the prompt is: Act as if I'm a software engineer. I'm networking with a fellow software engineering. Uh, grad from my alma mater, San Jose State. I want to gain insights on the industry and keep the message to under 250 words. And so again, right, the 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 key term here is to act as if you are 
the career field that you are within, and you are networking with somebody who shares this particular affinity uh, and a career area. And so you want to gain insights on that industry. And so you want to be impactful, you want to be interesting, and you want to show that you have targeted somebody who will fit the realm that you are looking for. So make sure that you are focused in that aspect and that uh, and that that'll work. And so, yeah, that uh, that will uh, that will that will really help uh, under that will really help you focus on what it is that you are looking for and uh, and show the people that you are networking with that you are listening. So some AI networking best practices, right? One of the things that you all always want to know is that AI is merely a start. It is 100% a recommendation uh, and it is it can help with writer's block, but you need to refine, refine, refine. So if you can take what AI has to start with and then uh, use your authenticity to edit it so it actually sounds like you, then it's going to benefit you a lot more. Uh, next, what you wanna do is you wanna focus on what you want and what you bring to the conversation. That's where this whole notion of acting as if you are somebody who is doing a specific activity with another individual so that you can get to the end point that you wanna get to is going to help AI prompt and give write out a, a prompt response that is really helpful to you. And then when in doubt, honestly, just look at relatability. If there's nothing else, you know, let's bring up a common connection. Uh, bring up a common university that you went to, uh, bring up a common hometown, sports teams even, right? So uh, all of these things bring that level of relatability because people really like being around people that they understand and that they know, like, and trust. So the more of that knowing, liking, and trusting that you can create, the greater benefit it will be of to you at the very end. All right, so we're here now at the end. And uh, just some closing thoughts, right? So there's a lot of ways to network. We talked about being able to network virtually, uh, network in person, uh, and network serendipit serendipitously even. Uh, but however you do it, it's important to show up, have a goal, and have that call to action. You can use AI to help you along the way, but AI should complement and not replace the entire way of how you network. And so with those in mind, I want to invite you to join Albert's List. I want you to come and see us, uh, join us in our group, come to our job search and entrepreneurship programs that complement what you get here at C6. Introduce yourself and get to know our members so that you can expand your network, get more of those, uh, get more of those uh, 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 informational interviews, and then. Uh, drive more of that success as you do your job search in this competitive market. So thank you so much. I appreciate your time and I look forward to hearing any feedback that you may have and, uh, and look forward to uh, hearing what your thoughts on the state of the networking situation today. Thanks so much. Bye.